Yep. I'm also joined by AC Parrott here this morning at Edwardstown at the Southern Yard for Safe. Safe um, thank you very much for coming out here this morning. Uh, what we're here to talk about today is, of course, uh, hoon driving. So tough new measures are coming in from the 1st of July. If you are a, a hoon motorist and you've done the wrong thing and your car has been uh, confiscated or impounded uh, for 28 days, uh, the message is clear, you'll have to cough up the cash or kiss your car goodbye. There'll be no payment plans, there'll be no sympathy for hoon drivers and motorists that do the wrong thing. After the 28 day period, uh, the fee for release will be $1135, $1135, and that will increase at the 38 day mark uh, to $1395, $1395. After that, South Australia Police will be able to sell or scrap or crush your car. So if you do the wrong thing, if you are caught by these confiscation uh, and impounding new laws that come in on the 1st of July, your car uh, could not only be uh, crushed, but it could also be sold and disposed of. We know that the overwhelming majority of South Australians do the right thing on our roads. The only people that are gonna have a problem with this are the idiots that do the wrong thing on our roads. Uh, take last night, for example, uh, where police will obviously allege uh, that there were three people involved in, a, in, in high speed, uh, in an 80k zone, uh, doing speeds well over uh, 130k an now. I mean, this is absolutely moronic, idiotic behaviour. So after the 1st of July, uh, if these cars are uh, uh, impounded, if they are confiscated, police will have the uh, opportunity to, in the first instance, sell or crush the vehicle. Uh, this will certainly serve as another deterrent uh, on our roads. Uh, we know that we've lost 48 lives on our roads this year compared to 44 at the same time last year. There's a, a range of offences for which uh, impounding and confiscation can apply. For example, uh, drink driving, drug driving, driving without a licence, uh, driving with excess speed, driving uh, without due care. So if these cars are impounded and confiscated for 28 days and the extra 10 days passes, and the fee is not paid, then SafeHold will have the right uh, to crush these cars or also sell them as well. Um, it's a very, very clear message to Hoon drivers. Uh, if, if you're caught by these new laws, you have to cough up the cash or kiss your car goodbye. I'll pass on to AC Parrott. Thanks, Minister. There's 48 lives lost on South Australian roads so far this year uh, in comparison to 44 lives this time last year. Um, we also speak often about the number of serious injuries that occur on our roads every year, which often result in lifelong injuries to individuals, um, families that need to care for people. And sometimes uh, this is because of people's own irresponsible behaviour. Um, they wind up either killing themselves uh, or being seriously injured. Uh, but in the most tragic of circumstances, uh, these people who uh, choose to drive like idiots, um, who drive like hoons on our roads, uh, end up killing innocent motorists who are doing the right thing. Uh, the changes to the uh, impounding and clamping uh, legislation uh, now requires people to pay to get their car back, uh, whereas previously um, this hasn't been a requirement. And effectively the impounding laws target those driving behaviours uh, which um, are the majority of causes of death and serious injury on our roads every year. As the Minister mentioned, drink and drug driving. And combined, they're about a third um, of a contributing factor to uh, all fatalities on our roads. Speeding, again, about a third of, of all lives lost on our roads can be attributable to speeding. So it's no surprise that uh, the vehicles are being impounded for 28 days, but from here in, um, the message is very, very clear if you haven't got it already. Your vehicle gets impounded for 28 days, and unless you pay uh, in full to get it back, um, then the vehicle will either be uh, crushed, it'll be forfeited um, or, or sold. Uh, you will not be getting your vehicle back. So the message again, very clear. Um, do not uh, drive like an idiot on our roads. Do not speed, do not drink or drug drive. Um, do not uh, engage in hoon driving behaviour. It's simply not acceptable. And hopefully uh, this will be another reminder, a stark reminder for people that uh, we're not prepared to accept that type of behaviour on our roads. 
I notice there's a no additional payment plan. So does that mean at the moment there's an issue with Hoons basically getting their cars back straight out, straight up the court proceedings? Yeah, look, I think it's really important that uh, people understand that there are consequences for their behaviour. And one of the consequences that's not currently uh, in place but will be from 1 July is that you can actually get your car back after 28 days. Um, we're very serious about road safety, we're very serious about saving lives and reducing serious injuries. From 1 July you will not get your car back unless you pay the penalty and hopefully that penalty is the last one that you'll pay, it's the last time that your car will be in an impound yard. I guess too there's the flow on effect, so um, no car, no job opportunities, struggling with your family, like the responsibility then is much greater. Yeah, it's something that people don't often think about um, when they're taking risks on our roads and that is the ongoing impact. And you're quite right, if you lose your car for 28 days, how are you going to get to work? Um, potentially how are you going to get the kids to school? There's a range of issues that people don't necessarily think about when they're, take, when they're actually taking risks on our roads. Um, people who drink and, uh, drink and drug drive, you know, if you're having a, a drink when you're going out or if you decide to have an extra drink, have a think about the consequences. You've got a month, really, where you're actually not going to be able to take kids to school or you're going to have to rely on other people to get you around as well, or public transport. So these are, um, you know, the, I guess the day-to-day -day consequences that people sometimes don't think about, um, let alone the fact that, um, you know, I guess in the, it's the best case scenario, really, for someone to get caught and their vehicle to be impounded because, as we've seen, uh, people get killed and people get serious injuries that are lifelong impacting. So it's the best outcome for some people. These measures, um, are they in place in other states? Um, so I think each state has a different uh, arrangement, but it's a very clear message from this state, and that is that um, you engage in high-risk um, behaviour and hoon driving behaviour, uh, you will lose your car, and unless you pay for it, you're not going to get it back. Does Do you think this is enough to deter some of these criminals? I mean, some of these cars aren't worth very much, and maybe money isn't a factor for some of these criminals. Do you think maybe we need to be looking at whether they're put in jail for longer or tougher penalties? Uh, so I think that uh, people would be aware of the extreme um, speed legislation that's uh, currently uh, being considered. Uh, so there are penalties and we are always looking at other legislative opportunities to reduce this type of, of offending behaviour. But you only have to look at um, examples as recent as last night, McLean Vale, 17 year old, 18 year old, 19 year old, um, we're alleging will be effectively street racing, you know, driving at extreme speeds uh, in our suburbs, no regard for anybody else. Their three cars are behind me here in the yard today. Now they'll be here for another 28 days. Now, for those three lads, um, they're not going to be um, required to pay before they get their car because they're before the 1 July deadline. But every time after that, um, I only imagine that for a 17 year old, you know, a thousand plus you know, dollar fine to get your car back is a significant impact for them. So that's something we want young male drivers to be really thinking about, but essentially every driver to be thinking about. Is it particularly concerning given that passengers in the car as well when they were at these speeds? Yeah, that's a really disappointing thing about it. Um, this is why some of the laws come in relation to P-plate um, provisions, because there are some people who um, are very excited about getting a driver's licence and, and unfortunately drive beyond their capability or take too many risks. And the people who are passengers in the car have got no choice in that. You know, they actually have no control over the vehicle and no say in it. So it's, it really is um, one of those situations where um, if you're in a car with a mate who's driving like an idiot, call him out on it, um, call him an idiot, tell him to stop, get out of the car, whatever you can to do it um, to do to make yourself safe. Because it's one of those things that, you know, really is unfair on passengers in cars. And how lucky are these guys last night that they didn't have a serious accident? You know, they're on that main road there near Victor. There's a lot of traffic. Yeah. yeah, again, <laughs> when you're doing the speeds that these three were in close proximity to each other, you only have to have a car or a kid or a cyclist or an animal come out from the side of the road and it's going to end in catastrophic consequences. You know, it, it's not often just down to the driving ability of the, of the people behind the wheel, but it's of the unforeseen circumstances that you can't control that are going to happen in front of you. And this is why it's so important to, to stick to the speed limit. I mean, I think we've been banging on for years about the fact that, you know, five kilometres um, faster in a 60k zone doubles your chance of being killed or seriously injured. These are things that are well known. So you know, hopefully, again, uh, the fact that we're increasing, effectively increasing penalties for people who uh, drink and drug drive, who speed, um, who d engage in hoon driving uh, by having them pay before they get their vehicle out. Um, hopefully that will send a stronger message again. Would you say SA has a problem with hoon drivers? Uh, I wouldn't say we don't have a problem with hoon drivers. Um, yeah, absolutely. There are people who still choose to 
um, drive, uh, as we described, like hoons, um, burnout, speeding, etc. Um, driving recklessly on, on our roads uh, in the hills. I think um, some of the motorcyclists and the motorcycle deaths, again, are very prevalent in our lives lost this year. Um, many of those are due to exceeding the speed limit or driving beyond their capabilities. So, you know, there is a real um, issue here that we are trying to get on top of and, and trying to um, not only just not only enforce the law, there's a lot of education that we, we put out all, every year. There are a number of you know, driver training sessions that our road safety school does. Um, but when it comes down to hoon driving, uh, we are taking a very tough stance on this because clearly the message is not getting through as much as we would like it to.